Well, hey, welcome everybody. Guess what? We are going to do some amazing training today. Uh, and I'm joined by a beautiful co-host and an amazing volunteer. And I'm going to introduce some to you here in just a moment. Um, but it, what we're going to do today is we're going to do a deep dive into the Healy coaching module, um, as well as a bit of uh, understanding around um, mind and body connection. I want to really kind of dive into that so we understand what the platform is that we're starting from. So everyone say hello to Lori Falk. She is an epigenetic coach. Um, I've been uh, privileged to work with her in many um, aspects. Uh, we're both on the Healy USA uh, board of directors where we're kind of get to collaborate and help uh, the field and uh, be a better voice between corporate and our field leadership and our membership. So hello, Lori. Hi. Hi, Ken. Thank you so much for asking to collaborate with you today to do this. I'm certainly the one person in the company who's having the biggest love affair with the coaching module. And I can't wait to share all those components with you today or as much of it as we can in a couple of hours, because it is so complex, but it's so wonderful and it's so exciting. And I am really grateful that you guys took your Saturday, your time on a beautiful summer Saturday to be here with us today. Mm, uh, indeed, indeed, indeed. I want to make sure and thank all of you for being here. And I also want to introduce, thank you, Lori, for that, um, our amazing volunteer. Now, I want you guys to understand that um, we're going to kind of do a deep dive into someone's life, okay? So um, what, what's important here is, is that we create an intention. Um, uh, she's going to create an intention and share that with us. But as a group, let's collaborate for a moment in just a moment of deep breath and centering ourselves within our hearts because we're going to... Uh, open up some things around uh, our volunteer and move through things to help um, help align her with with this intention. So what I would like is everybody here in the audience, first of all, is just to find their own heart, okay? Because I'm sure the reason you're here is so that you can learn how to do this for yourselves as well as your family, friends, and maybe clients. So open your heart, find space within your area. Um, within your body uh, to just love on another person right now. Okay, so that's what we're going to kind of do. So I want to introduce you to Stephanie Bernstein. Uh, she has been gracious enough to uh, volunteer herself um, and to see what comes of this experience. And then so she can also take this content, not only for her own healing, but also being able to offer it to her world. So hi, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ken. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to, to do this with you guys. I'm excited and I'm honored. Awesome. Thank you for being willing and to be vulnerable and share a little bit of your soul because this, this work goes deep and we honor you for that. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It does take a lot of courage, folks, um, to look into ourselves. How many of you are willing to look in the mirror? and stare yourselves down with your truth, right? I'm saying lean in and look into that mirror <laughs> and just spend, I would love to challenge you to spend 30 seconds eye to eye with yourself in the mirror and just see what comes of that inner dialogue within the mind. And that's what we're gonna start talking about is how the mind and the body interface. So let's get this party started. How about that? Ready? All right. Do you want me to stay off mute or are um, you going to? Yeah, go ahead. And, and you can, if your background noise is, is quiet, that's cool. Just okay. um, whichever, it's fine. Um, so what I want to open up with is the understanding around the mind and body. There's this collaboration and quite often there's this this dysfunctional collaboration, right, between the mind and the body. Because to be honest, there are 60 to 70,000 thoughts per day going on through this mind, right? And, and the majority of those, 90% or so, are thoughts from yesterday. They're things that rehearsed from the day before and the day before the day before. Ancestral content come into the present moment. 
and this mind rehearses it. This is not a bad thing. Just understand what's this mind doing? What's its purpose? And Michael Singer writes a book called Untethered Soul. I highly recommend that book because it gives a, a very distinct clarity around this mind and its purpose. The mind's purpose really, literally, is to make sense of things. I mean, pretty simple, to make sense of things. And for the most part, it's trying to make sense of the outside world so that your inside world can find balance or meaning, coherence. So if we see something outside, how many of you guys have opened the curtains and it's like, you see it's raining outside and your mind says, oh, it's raining. And you're like, yeah, I know it's raining. I see that it's raining, but the mind keeps telling you it's raining. And the moment you decide I'm going to go outside, well, it's raining. I'm going to go to the store while it's raining. I'm going to go and meet friends while it's raining. The mind constantly rehearses this thing of the outside world so that it makes sure that it balances with the understanding on the inside world, right? It's like redundant. And sometimes it's not being friendly to us. How many times is that happening? I, I know not to you guys, but I'm just saying, maybe you know somebody in which the mind is not friendly to them, right? Um, so this is the mind's job to make sense of things. And when the mind starts to create thoughts, um, have uh, assigning meaning, uh, it, it will start to create a, uh, a chemical that goes into the body so that the body can kind of feel the understanding of what the mind's created. These are the emotions. And it's important that, you know, because thought is to the brain. The brain is an organ, it's a part of us. And thought is to the brain as emotion or feelings are to the body. And these two enrich the experience, the experience of life. And that's really, I think, what, you know, what we're looking at. We're looking at experiences within our life. And as this body gets um, more time in this life, in other words, we add more birthdays with the zero on the end of it, we start to solidify some of the emotional programming that the body understands. The, the cell receptor sites literally get more efficient at, at receiving chemistry around whatever dominant feelings that we've built. So if we've been angry a lot, the body builds a history around being angry. If we've been joyous a lot, the body builds a history about around being joyous. Cell receptor sites within the, the structures of your body, uh, vital systems become very efficient at simply expressing a redundant program, uh, an emotion. And, and then the reason I'm calling it a, re a redundant program is because if I was to say to you, just for a moment, think of something that you feel love for. It, it can be a sunset, it can be a pet, it can be a child, it could be uh, a partner. Just think for a moment. Let's just all do this together. And to put a heart in the comment if you can do this. Just for a moment, think of something that brings love to you. Put a heart in the comment if you can. All right, just go ahead. Think of it. Think of it. I got something. Mm -hmm. I love it. I feel it. You feel it? Right? Now, did you just make up the feeling of love just now? No, the body already knew how to do it, right? This is a history lesson, by the way. I hope you're taking notes. There'll be a test at the end. <laughs> the body already knew how to feel love. And what did it require? It simply required a thought. And that thought generated a chemistry that went into the body and opened these cell receptor sites. And you could feel a sensation within the body. This is the mind-body connection. And we may feel it differently. Like some people may feel this, this love in their tummy, right? The butterflies or something like that depends on who you're thinking about. <laughs> um, you may feel it in your chest. I mean, you may feel it in your stomach. You may feel it in different parts of your body. Just understand and allow the body sensation to be, to be in your awareness. Where am I feeling it? But it didn't just happen just now. All of our emotions by about the age of 30, 35 years old, somewhere in there, all of emotions are built into the body. We have an understanding of some sort. And we understand what specifically created that emotion. 
And so when we see something on our outside world that stimulates um, our senses perceive something, it stimulates a thought. The thought creates the chemistry and the body feels it. Okay, so how many are in traffic sometimes? You get cut off and you get angry, right? So this is an outside stimulus creating a thought or an opinion or a judgment of the action. And now we feel it in the body as anger. You did not just make up that anger just now. There's plenty of things probably you can find valid in your world to make you angry. Uh, but the point is, is this is a mind and body connection. I want everybody to get a handle on that because we're going to hack into that. We're going to hack deep into that. And the history lesson that's built into the body and the cell structures, the cell receptor sites, uh, we're going to hack those. We're going to reprogram those. We're going to change how thoughts influence things and in the body. And the thoughts are the electrical signals as the brain does action. As the brain has a thought, it's electrical. And the, if the feelings within the heart and the body are magnetic. And the two build and create a electromagnetic signal that goes out into your environment, out into your world, not just in your house, not just in your city, not just in your state, but the entire universe. And guess what happens? This signal starts to attract like energies, right? So we're going to start building a model, how we can become aware of this energetic um, signaling that we're doing and how it's going to give mm, a response, a drawback to you. So we're going to build some models around how we adjust that. So that's super exciting. And, I, I, and on the other side of this mind-body connection, on the other side of this magnetic transmission and attraction, on the other side of creating a clear intention and finding um, alignment with it. On the other side of that is a new biological structure. And I want you guys to listen for a second. This new biological structure sometimes doesn't fit in your old world, okay? Um, the, the version of you that's created today's life has built programming and structures to fit within it. It's a survival technique. And 97% of the genetic code is adaptive so that the organism, the body, the person can fit into their life, into their environment right? This is a survival tactic of the body. This is something you're not, you don't have to do. You don't have to think about it. 800,000 cells per second, 800,000 cells per second are being recreated, right? And there's a genetic code written, forwarded to each new cell. And 97% of that code is adaptive. 3% says it's going to be a skin cell, bone cell, muscle cell, whatever part of you it's going to be. 97% is adaptive. Looking at the energy, energy of its environment so that it can adapt the cell to fit the environment. So we've all built this. We've all built this up to this present moment. And if it doesn't fit the life you want, then we have some reprogramming to do. And there's going to be a biological surrender of the old body, of the old self. This is sometimes called the dark night of the soul. <laughs> this is not a bad thing, but there is a surrendering process at the other side, at the other side of this alignment or this healing is a new version of you. And if you want it and you're going to stay attached to it, then you've got to surrender the old one. You know, there was a, a Spanish uh, leader that took his troops to a new world, left the shores of the comfort zone, went to the new world to conquer and become this new life and this, this new society. When they got there, he was concerned 
about changing their mind. Well, what if, what if my troops, what if we, what if I change my mind? So he burned the ships. <laughs> he burned the ships. He's like, I'm committed. I'm all in. I can't go back. There's no plan B. <laughs> so folks, we're going to, we're going to show you a plan A and I'm going to invite you to surrender any plan B. And I'm going to invite you to burn your ships when you get there and say, let's let go of the old self. And, and even though this world gives us justification to go back to old programming that we don't, that we just don't. Okay. That's where true surrender and true growth starts to happen. So hopefully that sounds like a fun little adventure for you guys. Um, and Stephanie is our beautiful volunteer to get this party started. So Lori, I am going to be here to hold space for you and for Stephanie and all of us in the audience. Let's do the same. And I'm going to hand it over to you, Lori. And when you need me, you just come in and I will accent and help you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Ken, for that deep dive into the mind-body connection. And I think you painted a beautiful picture of those comfort zones that get created in our lives. And, you know, what I really want you guys to understand is that the coaching module is the most sophisticated part of this device. And, and it's the most life-changing part of this device. And I encourage each and every one of you to utilize it for a, a multitude of reasons, not just because you want to improve your business, not just because you want a better relationship, not just, you know, whatever your current goal or intention is. But I want you to understand that when you're doing this level of healing work, you're literally going in and finding the subconscious triggers that can set off physical DNA that can create disease. That's the epigenetic component of this. And so, so you think you're just doing personal growth work and you're really helping your physical body in one of the most profound ways that you possibly can because you're getting rid of all the gunk. When you say, my life is here, but I wanna go here, everything that's in between those two things is gonna come up. And some of it isn't yours. Most of it isn't yours. And we're going to find which is your parents, which is your grandparents, which is ancestral, which is karmic. It's all the coaching modules can just show us all of that. What this device is capable of doing, this module, it would take me six months, and I've been coaching for 20 years. It would take me six months working with someone one-on-one -on -one to get to where I can get in six minutes. And for those of you who are in the company, who are actually working the business, go out and sell this to every coach you know, because honestly, I, as a professional coach, will not work with anyone anymore unless they buy a Healy and get the coaching module. And that's how strongly I believe in it. And it's not just to make another sale. That's not it at all. I am saving people time and money, but because this is so effective to do it this way. But Part of that so effective and part of that shortening of the timeline means that the process of healing and changing and shifting, like Ken said, can be a little bit of a dark night of the soul. Stuff's gonna come up. It just, it can't, it, you can't get from here to here without clearing the stuff in between. And when you let go of that stuff, like I'm, I'm crazy. Sometimes I run the coaching module for eight hours and myself overnight. Now, I would not recommend that to the average show ever. And certainly don't do it unless you have a great support, like you're working with a coach or you've got friends that are ready to like hold you in their arms because you're going to wake up the next morning and guess what? You're not going to recognize yourself. It's going to be like, wait a minute. Yesterday when that happened, I did this. I'll always do this, but now I did that? How did that happen? because the patterns that were keeping you stuck in that old way of being left. So not only can we find what's in the way, but then because we have this amazing quantum sensor 
to go in there and send the frequencies to shake all that stuff loose. I'm telling you, I've been coaching for 20 years and it takes people usually 26 days to let go of an old behavior once they have it in their conscious awareness. This is gonna start happening immediately because you're sending vibrations into the subconscious that start to just, it's kind of like chiseling away at it and letting it go without you having to think about it. And the other part of this, you know, I, when I went through the School of Spiritual Psychology and I was getting my coach training and we were about six months in and I remember we started to have people in classmates who were in relationships and their relationships started to fall apart. They just were tumultuous and, and things were coming up. And my professor said, you know, we probably should have put a disclaimer on the front of the manual that said, taking this program could be detrimental to your relationship if your spouse isn't doing this work at the same time. Because that's how big the shifts are. And so you got to know whether you're in a relationship or not, you are in relationships with people and every single one of those relationships will change as well. So I want to, I want to add to that because as I mentioned, this dark night of the soul, this transition time, don't look at it as a negative thing. As your vibration raises, you're going to raise the vibrations of ones around you. Right. So you're going to influence your world in a whole new way. Some will come with you. Some will not. And that's an okay thing because their learning is their own pace, right? So don't shrink. Do not shrink for anyone else's shortcomings, okay? It's okay. Shine your light. Shine your light. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you will attract really incredible, awesome, and amazing people into your life. The fact that you're part of this company tells me, you're an amazing being of light already because I believe this company only attracts people who actually want to raise their consciousness, who are on the path of raising consciousness. So isn't that exciting? If you guys have any questions along the way, just throw them in the chat. And if I don't see them because I'm too busy looking at my phone and helping Stephanie, then Ken will let me know. I got you. You got me. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> All right, so Stephanie, are you ready? I think so. All right, so why don't you tell um, why don't you tell us all what your intention is for today? I believe Ken had you write something up. Yes. So um, so my intention is to is to address, and talk about how I can have a perfectly balanced, um, how I can have perfectly balanced emotions um, that allow me to manage and navigate chronic depression and anxiety, and that I have gratitude for living in abundance in everything that I do. Awesome, awesome, that's huge. That is really huge. So have you by chance written that down? Uh, I have, I have a little cheat sheet. Oh, good. I love cheat sheets. That's how I run my world. I'm a no, I'm an, I'm a, a note taker. So yes, I, I run it. Excellent. Cause the most important thing is that when we're starting to work with the coaching module, we get super, super clear about what we are wanting, what our goal is, what our objective is, but mm -hmm. the most important thing, Stephanie, the most important thing, how are you going to feel? when you have manifested that, and that is your new reality? What are the feelings you're gonna have? Relief, control, excitement, happiness. I keep going back to relief, um, feeling free, feeling freedom. Excellent, and did you add that into the intention that you wrote out? No, but I can do that right now. Excellent, excellent. And while Stephanie's doing that, I just want to share with all of you, the Healy isn't going to read anything that she's written down. But the reason that I have people write that in is because it grounds it into 3D reality, number one. And number two, it helps them get into that space. 
because what the what the Healy is going to read is your information field. So once we get all of this data input into the coaching module, when we get to the part of actually running the analysis, that's where I'm going to bring you back to that feeling. And I want you to feel that. And it's going to then be able to so much more effortlessly find what's in the way and what's preventing you from feeling that way. Because at the end of the day, it's all about how we want to feel. Right? Right. I just got to tell you this, this, this is, this is a story that I heard my coach share with us when I was in coach training. And and it points this out so vividly. So she was working with a gentleman who was working for a Fortune 500 company and he wanted a red Ferrari. That was his intention, okay? A little bit more 3D than yours. I like yours better, by the way, but <laughs> this example, this is a great example. So he wanted a red Ferrari and she said, okay, well, how are you gonna feel when you have that red Ferrari? And they dialed it down after going through all these emotions to one feeling, and he would feel free. He would feel like he, if he could buy that red Ferrari, he had the freedom to do anything he wanted. So she said, okay, they didn't have a Healy back then, this 20 years ago, right? And so she said, what can you do on a daily basis to put yourself in the space of feeling that freedom? And he said, hmm. Well, I have a three-year-old daughter. I guess I could get down on the floor and, and finger paint with her and not worry about making a mess. She said, great, finger painting's on the list. What else? And he thought a little harder and he said, well, hmm, I could not wear any underwear under my Armani suits when I go out on sales calls. <laughs> and she said, commando it is. So anything that you can do to assist the Healy along the way to feel that sense of relief will also be fabulous. And the moral of that story is he did all of these things and a month later he got a huge bonus check, way more than enough money to pay cash for the red Ferrari. So he goes to the dealership, test drives the car, takes it out on the highways, the country roads, literally is gone for an hour, comes back in, hands the salesman the keys and says, thank you very much. Walks out of the dealership, down the street to the travel agency where he booked a one month safari to Africa for his entire family. Because it was never about the red Ferrari. It was about the freedom. And for you, it's about the relief that you're going to feel, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Relief. relief and freedom. Yes, yes. So do you want to pop your... Um, intention into the chat so we can all sure. read it and then I will be able to copy and paste that into the healing. You know, uh, uh, assigning meaning to what Lori is saying here means that um, when we become clear on a feeling, remember what I said, the thought is the electrical part. The feeling is the magnetic part. The heart has more energy than the brain. And it will send a very strong signal. And if we have our heart open, then, then there's a lot more energy for that intention. There's a lot more uh, clarity. And we can assign a better, a better meaning. So the heart itself is important. And so how many of us navigate our life on a daily basis thinking someone is against us or life is not for us? Uh, and, and we we get an experience of some sort that we reflect back on how we were treated yesterday, right? Or last year, you know, the 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 last job we were in, uh, the last relationship we were in. We we reflect back on this content. That's not who we are today, unless we decide to bring that forward. Those sixty to seventy thousand thoughts I told you about. If we bring them forward, and the eight hundred thousand cells per second I told you about, that's this present moment. Don't bring the thought forward because then those 800,000 cells don't become the version of the past. And often we take those past thoughts, bring them to the present moment, predict the future with them, and we haven't changed a thing. Right? Understand that? Okay. So let's, let's, let's bring new thoughts in. Here we go. 
Absolutely. Put your questions in the, in the chat and I will definitely address those. Okay, guys. All right. Okay. So let's look at Stephanie's intention. I have perfectly balanced emotions that allow me to manage chronic depression and anxiety. And I have gratitude for the ability to live in abundance in everything that I do. So are you open to me helping you with this? Just tweaking it a little teeny bit? Oh, of course. Okay. So rather than just I have, let's say I am grateful. Okay. To feel the relief and freedom that having perfectly balanced emotions allows me. Now the intention here, folks, is to when we're building intentions. This is this is part of the exercise here, everyone. Learning how to build an intention, an aligned intention with you that's on the other side of this challenge, the other side of a belief about us at this moment. So the intention, we don't want to bring forward the past. We want to bring uh, the new self into this present moment. So anything that has to do with uh, what we're trying to working on overcoming and look at who you are on the other side the state of being uh, is most important the the answer to our desire we don't really get what we want we get what we're being so that state of being is the critical formula how are you being in this moment even in the face of say an anxiety attack or some triggering mechanism outside of us where we feel like, what? But, but they cut me off in traffic. I should be justified in stressing out and being angry. You are. You're justified. But you're bringing the past forward to this present moment to predict your future. And your future will become a biological organism of anger. Is that what you want? There's no time in which you relax that idea or say, I'm just going to take a breather from my creation and just be a, a lower vibration. You're just going to increase the amount of time it requires to achieve your goal. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So Stephanie, thank you, Ken. Yes. Stephanie, would you read the one that I just wrote? It's very similar. It's just keeping it in present moment and really bringing that emotion in. Yes. I am grateful to feel the relief and freedom that having perfectly balanced emotions allows me. I am now free of chronic depression and anxiety, and I'm grateful to now live in abundance in everything that I do. How does that feel? It feels great. Excellent. And I want you to listen to me. I have dealt with major depressive disorder for two and a half decades. I promise you, it can change because it has for me. Not that I don't have a day here or there, and I grab my Healy. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, what we're gonna do is encourage you to have Kleenex nearby. Oh Lord, okay. <laughs> and you're gonna share your screen, right, Lori? To... Yes, I'm doing it right now. Yep, so Sheree had a question about being able to see oh, where yeah. that, so everybody, you're gonna see. Where you're gonna put this content, okay? So you're gonna you're gonna get the real deal. So take screenshots. You're gonna have a recording to go over and over and over. You can pause it, re rewind, all that. So. As we're going through this, everyone, anybody who comes in new, I just encourage you to mute yourself so we can get a good clean recording for everyone. Um, so when you do review it, we don't have any background noises. It's nice and clear. Thank you. It's being finicky. Hang on. I do this every day, so it shouldn't be, but it is. So the way it works, folks, is that, well, so she's going to share her screen, by the way, and you'll be able to see all this stu fun stuff on, on how it works now. So the Healy is run from an app. I mean, it's everybody who's got a smartphone 
or a, a tablet, smart device of some sort can run a Healy. Now there's a certain limitation in uh, as far as the operating system, it can't be from the okay. you know, early 2000s. <laughs> but the point is, is this, this runs off of a smartphone. If you have a smartphone, you can be an amazing international coach. I'm just saying. So this system works very simply from a smart device. It's a very complex system in which it integrates between the Healy hardware. I'm wearing mine, by the way, it's just underneath yeah, everything. It better be. <laughs> I'm, I'm holding an intention. So by the way, what I'm running, you guys that do have Healy's, um, they, we have a program called Coherence. And if you run Coherence, Coherence builds an energetic code within your biology and your spirituality, as well as electrical body of alignment. Um, but it's also, it, it, it does more than that. Coherence in anything is integration and differentiation. It's two things. We, we need balance, but we need rigidity, right? We need strength. Um, it, without strength, you're just mold over by default. So coherence is integration and differentiation. That's the definition of coherence integrating what you've learned, what you know, and what you think and believe, and then looking at the differentiation between that, what's offered and what you're accepting, all right? So take that into account. Coherence means you've got to be able to be strong and open, <laughs> okay? You are the balancing agent. You build the bridges. That's the perfection of being human. <laughs> Okay. Absolutely. So just bear with me. I what, what showed up on my screen never showed up before when I was using screen share on Zoom. So I just shut my phone off. Okay. And I'm rebooting. Rebooting it. Yeah. And, and this is, by the way, how many of you guys turn your smart device off every day? <laughs> One. <laughs> <laughs> So here's what happens when you turn your smart device off. Here's what happens when you turn your Wi-Fi router off. Here's what happens when you turn your television off. The logic circuits that are within these devices are able to reset their connection to peripheral con um, uh, it devices, whatever they are, the screen, the audio, um, all that. Just the, the, the CPU is able to refresh some of those connections. So it's important to turn your smart device off um, on a daily basis. Do I do that? I'll admit no, but I do that probably every other day, you know? So just if you haven't done it in a month, <laughs> you know, it's well overdue. Okay. So shutting the technology down, rebooting it, um, is a lot of times what happens and what's necessary. Yay. Okay. Here she is. Excellent. So I just, oops, texted that message to myself. Oops, now you're seeing everything, but why didn't it come through? Oh my goodness. Lori, Ann, you're having technical difficulties today. We'll open the Healy app while I'm grabbing that. I probably, I probably wrote it in the text and then didn't hit send because I'm, this is what happens when you're intent on really focused on helping someone versus yeah, I the nuts and bolts of things, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I use that analogy often. Uh, you know, we, we, are, we may be in this spiritual journey, but forgetting about some of the nuts and bolts of the have tos, there's things we need to work on and do in our daily life to yes. implement the practice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Got to find so, so, speaking of some of the nuts and bolts, um, when we're connecting with Healy, number one is we turn the Healy hardware device on. Uh, there's a very unique Bluetooth signaling process to help from it being hacked by other Bluetooth receivers so that you turn the Healy hardware on, then you open the app. Okay, then there's this handshaking process that happens and it begins to um, open that secure channel. So. That's why that you saw that authentication on the screen where it was looking for a specific serial number and Lori connected and now she's um, now there's a secure bond 
between the Healy hardware and her smart device. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Ken. And I do this even when I'm working on myself. I write out the uh, intention and text it to myself and then put it in the phone because I'm not, you know, 30 something or 20 something and I don't type on my phone quite as fast as a keyboard. So just a little tidbit for those of you who are closer to my age. In any event, so Stephanie, there is your beautiful intention. And now we will continue with the database selection. And this is the part, most of you that are on here are actually have Healy's and so you have an awareness. Um, this is where you need to be a little intuitive and, and you need to think, think into your own experience what might be impacting this issue. Right, because most of us have some awareness of which area of our life might be impacting it. So, because we're talking about depression and anxiety, ob the obvious place to go first is emotional balance. And we can go into the subcategories and we'll see that there's, in parentheses, you see the 21 on emotional harmony. That's how many potential blocks there are and if you want to see them they're here you don't get to pick because your conscious mind would pick something different than what your subconscious mind will reveal and you notice that so that little arrow she clicked on uh right there that little arrow to the right of the um of the category brings you to this screen right here where you can see all of the things uh that are in the background you don't get a pick. You can pick the category. The Healy system picks the actual line item. And this is done on an on a energetic, it's done on the electron field, by the way. It's done at uh, a level even below the cell. It's done in, a, in a, a space of information. This is the quantum field. That's how it's choosing this the content. You pick the category or Laura, your, your coach, or you pick these categories, the things in which you want answers for your alignment. What would best serve me to meet my goal of this intention? Is it going to be in living uh, consciously? Is it going to be within the energy and power? Is it going to be within emotional harmony? It, you choose the category, you put the number of items you want to want to pull from that category, and then it gives you these very distinct alignment tools. So there you go. Absolutely, absolutely. So when we're looking at this, I just met Stephanie today, so I don't really know her history or what's going on with her, but I do have an experience with her things that she's wanting to improve. So I would say emotional harmony, we should pick one in that category. We should pick one in energy and power just to see what comes up. Living consciously, you notice, has 79 potentials. And I'm going to change that to a three because the number one thing you can do is to be conscious. You want to be so conscious that you know that you can feel the chemical reaction that's starting by the one thought or the one emotion that starts to trigger any kind of depression or anxiety and be consciously aware and ask yourself, is this how I want to live or is there a better choice? Yes. It is. Grab your Healy. Okay. So, Stephanie, you know yourself better than anyone else. Would you think self worth might be an um, an area we should look like look at? Hundred. Yes. And I'm going to tell you guys why I went right to self worth because everybody has self worth issues. Every single person I've ever coached in all the years I've been coaching. So. It's important to get those things out of the way. Basics of self-esteem has 60, parameters for happiness has 33, and self-acceptance has 119 options. Do you resonate with any of those more than another? Um, I would say, well, I, I feel like the self-esteem and self-acceptance ones are pretty close and mirror each other. I would say those two. Okay. What is the, what's more of the difference, do you think, the basics of self-esteem versus self-acceptance? 
Um, basics of self-esteem. You can see a few examples here. The conviction to deserve love, overcoming my own limitations, willpower, reason, independence, versus just take a glance at self-acceptance. I accept my appearance. I accept my stance of the victim. I accept my resistance. Oh, this cat, this one for sure. Okay. So we'll, we'll take that and put a three next to that one. Now, what's going to happen here, folks, is you're going to see it at, when, when she does the scan, it's going to pull numbers, the, the number of items that she's putting here, the, no, the three of the items. She's going to pull three of the items within that one category and bring it to the analysis to find which three, which of the most proper three aligns the bridge. Now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the bridge. So the quantum sensor is essentially is a, it's, it's like a, no, a random generator. So and consciousness influences these random generators because it's a digital system, very low power and consciousness intention actually influences the, the what we call quote unquote randomness <laughs> of this output. And so it's a junction in which um, Stephanie or the client is on one side of the junction the database content, all of it, is on the other side of the junction, and the bridge creates an open space for the electron field to interface with, well, with the two. And, and it just builds energetic alignments on, on the electron level, such a small amount of energy, but yet such a huge influence. And at the speed of light, it takes all of the possibilities and aligns it with just one outcome. And you're going to see how that works here in a minute. Absolutely. So someone asked, can you choose more than three? And the answer is yes, you can. But for the sake of time today and, and keeping this in a training focus, I'm trying to keep it a little tighter so that we can get the bulk of the details of what you need to run this. Um, but I've picked as many as nine. I've, I've, I've loaded up some things. So I end up getting like 25 pages worth of stuff. If it's something I really want to take a deep dive into, but I'm a little crazy. So, all right, Stephanie, any other areas that you think might be contributing to this? Because sometimes depression and anxiety can be situational. Um, this is true. Sometimes it can be situational. Um, when it's been chronic and happening my entire life, all of these things seem to, there's always something that's an underlying issue in here, right? Um, I mean, really, I could say all of them. I would say. Well, let's pick one. Pick, okay. Tune into your heart and let's pick one for today. Okay. Um, then let's do finances. Okay. Another hot button for most people. All right. So in, in finances, they have identity focus with 288 possibilities personal responsibility with 63 and profession with 94. So identity focus, and we'll just kind of, if you look at what's after the semicolon, you'll see what it essentially is about to allow farewells, to transform pretensions, be able to bear aggression, attention experienced, to find a suitable apartment, I always find that one to be most interesting to find a suitable job, a suitable environment, living honestly. I mean, there's 288. We're not going to obviously go through them all, but you can see they get kind of specific in here. Yeah. And that was identity focus? Mm hmm. Okay. That one definitely resonates. Okay. And personal responsibility. In all areas of life, I practice the best possible personal responsibility. All areas of life are in optimal flow. Mm -hmm. I save myself, accept my power, and live within personal responsibility. So this is all stuff directed to owning yep. your responsibility and creating all of this. Yeah, definitely resonates as well. <clears throat> and profession. following professional theme is optimized partner. That could be a business partner. Uh, the following professional theme is optimized managing director, sources of knowledge, 
mm -hmm. business projects. So these are more business related issues. Yeah. So should we go with maybe, should we skip profession? I'm not sensing a lot of. Yeah, let's just, let's skip that one. Okay. And with personal responsibility, we'll put that at a two. Yeah. And identity focus, since there's so many, we'll put it at a three. Okay. Okay. As Lori mentioned earlier, folks, you don't want 25 pages of alignment content because it gets clouded. I mean, once you get used to under how this works, um, yeah, you could take a much deeper dive, but to take a kind of a, a surface level approach in the beginning, it will help you from being overwhelmed. <laughs> um, you don't want to have to, you know, dig into your healing and all of a sudden have to like take a nap. It's like, what is this way too much? Right? right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And all bites. Stephanie, is there anything else that jumps out at you that you go, I gotta have something in that category? Um, potentials. Okay, so in potentials, we have individual qualities, personal strengths, and personality aspects. The largest category being individual qualities with 250. And that we're looking at vigor, lone wolf, readiness for action, empathy, Mm -hmm. Effectiveness. Again, personal responsibility. See, some of these actually have a lot of crossover. Yes, exactly. Thank you. So, individual qualities, personal strengths, just what it says personal strengths, humor, creativity, patience, ambition. And these are things that I align with or things that I and I, I, I need some clarity on what it is that I'm selecting when we're going yeah, through. Absolutely. Is so Healy's going to find the, where the imbalances are that are keeping you from not feeling that sense of relief and freedom. So those items that you were just showing me are things that I'm struggling with, is what you're saying? It's going to look for the things that you're struggling with, whether you're consciously aware of them or un, it's an unconscious program. Okay, got it. Okay, and personality aspects, inner suffering, freedom aspect, survival, anxious. All of them. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so perhaps we should put a three on that one and leave the other two alone. Yeah. Okay, excellent. All right. So for the sake of, of time, mm -hmm. I am going to just run these and because we don't want to overload you as Ken said. Thank um, you. You're very <laughs> welcome. So then the most next most important thing is what? The check mark on the top right. Always have to make sure because you'll lose what you just input if you don't. Yeah, so if you guys saw at the top of the screen, there's a little check mark. You have to tap on that. Once you've made all these selections, you tap on the check mark at the top right of the screen that locks all that content into the scan parameters. Okay, so take a just so you notice that. And again, this is recorded, everyone. So you we're going to provide that for you. However, you got here to this call today um, is where you'll find the recording. So you'll be able to review this. Okay, now before I hit start analysis, Stephanie, mm -hmm. drop into your heart. And know and believe that it's possible that this can be a part of your past and that your present and future will just be gratitude to feel the relief and freedom that having per per perfectly balanced emotions allows you. Imagine that you're now free of all chronic anxiety and depression and that you're living a life of gratitude in abundance in everything that you do. And while you're holding that in your heart, and we all collectively are holding that intention for you, we'll run the analysis. Okay, excellent. You can open your eyes. 
So what I do next is I go up to the top where those four arrows are mm -hmm. and click on that. And I go down to potency. And there. It's not doing it the way I wanted it to. There we go. All right. So what the reason I'm sorting by potency is, and we're going to show you guys afterwards the cheat sheet if you don't have it. It's called Resonance Homeopathic Interpretations. Um, having done this now for almost nine months, some of it I kind of have in my brain. I don't have to use the cheat sheet quite as much. So I can tell you by sorting it this way that you're going to come up with all the Ds first. And the Ds, so you see where it says 75% and then the number three in between the two lines and then it says D100,000. We want to look at all the Ds first because those are the causes. Those are the subconscious blocks and beliefs that are causing the triggers that are setting off the chronic depression and anxiety. Not necessarily consciously, because the number three tells me you may not have much of an awareness of this, and that's okay. Because now it's bubbling up to the surface, and, and the Healy will help you with it. And 100,000 puts it in the category of a life theme, like something you came here to experience and learn in this lifetime. And so it's coming up in the area of emotional balance and living consciously. And the desired state, my awareness is a source of joy and satisfaction to me and fills me with meaning in life. Wouldn't it be amazing to feel that every day? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm guessing you probably haven't quite yet. Correct. Okay. That's okay. It's, it's fixer upable. That's the key. Anything that's in that subconscious is either inherited or learned behavior. And anything that's learned can be unlearned and relearned in a healthier way. And that's what we're gonna do. All right, next we have D1E36. This one actually comes from your ancestors. So thank you very much ancestors. This might've worked for you in your lifetime in the world you lived in. It's not working for Stephanie. <laughs> Exit stage left, right? Mm -hmm. I recognize the unconscious causes that lead me to drag myself down in my well being and energy levels. The desired state, description. I can stand to feel good and be happy permanently. I end the drama of sabotaging myself and my well being and happiness. Doesn't that feel yummy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, they were doing the best they could. And and could the desired state also be used as daily affirmations? Yes, Barbara, absolutely. Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, in fact, when what I do is I either, if it's for myself, I print it out. If it's for a client, I tell them to print it out. It's for my group coaching programs. I tell people, print these out, go through and highlight the areas that you will, whoa, that really hits me. And then use those those desired state descriptions as affirmations, because that will just accelerate the process of letting it all go and having a new way of being in the world. So isn't this already making you feel better to see that it's not like you decided to wake up one day and feel depressed, that this stuff comes from ancestors, some of whom you've never met. Yep. All right, we're going to look at the dissatisfaction part and get into a desired state of, I do not seek the limelight. I find fulfillment in myself, in the unity with other people, creatures, and the whole world. I am value-free and equal with everything that is. How does that feel? It's totally true. I mean, that's exactly what I want and um, aspire, to, aspire to. And then will you feel the relief? And Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. Excellent. All right. Here's another one from your ancestors. I realize that I'm clouding my consciousness in my mind so that I can hold on to my burdensome partnership. Mm 
Yep. All right. So it's going to bring this to the forefront and you're going to have a much more conscious awareness of it. All right. So now we're moving into the C's. The C's are the consequences based on the causes. These are the consequences. This is what's showing up as a result of having those things. We want to get to a desired state of I manage my affairs easily and effortlessly. I have my life under control. Does it that would be amazing? that would be amazing. Right. <laughs> and and it's possible. It's absolutely possible. And the reason that you aren't experiencing that yet is because of those causes we just looked at. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to get them offline. How exciting is that? Very. <laughs> All right, so here's another one. I experience the power to understand and implement the following focus for my benefit and for the benefit of the whole, to be able to develop desire. When's the last time you followed your heart's desire? I guess it's, I guess it has been a while, or at least things. I do, but things have contingencies, right? Mm -hmm. So to be able to do that without contingencies, it's, it's been a long time. Excellent. So I see Karina asked a question. How do, you, how do we know that it's related to the ancestors? And it's in the interpretation, D1E36, when you have the cheat sheet, will actually show you that it is ancestral in nature. So we'll get you guys this cheat sheet because it, it, it makes it easier to understand uh, what the, you know, what the D, the C, the LM categories, and then those numbers, how they um, give light to wrong acting, wrong thinking, you know, uh, what categories they operate in. So we'll get that chart here. Yes, absolutely. And so if you want that chart, pop your email into the chat and I'll make sure that it gets sent out to each and every one of you. All right. And our next one. Is in finance and I experienced the power to understand and implement the following focus for my benefit and the benefit of the whole, to recognize value. To recognize value. And this might be value of yourself. It might be worthiness and knowing that you're worthy yeah. to receive the value of abundance, right? Mm -hmm. I also encourage people as they're running these programs every day to journal what's coming up for you and to actually get, get in there and be part of the process so that you can see where the awarenesses are that are coming up for you. This one is an area of self-worth and self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I realize and develop the ability to be filled with self-esteem. My self-esteem is nourished by my self-respect and self-efficacy. How does that feel? It feels amazing and like something I aspire, aspire to, to have. All right. And I want you to absolutely make sure you put that on a post-it on your bathroom mirror because you are an amazing being. I want you to see in yourself what Ken and I and everybody else in this group can see in your heart. All right, in self-worth and parameters for happiness. I recognize the unconscious causes that lead me to believe that what I see is actually my true happiness. What I see with my eyes is merely my, my brain's interpretation of outward appearances. I realize that being happy comes from how I look at the world. I look at the world value-free and with a perfectly open field of vision. And I recognize the splendor of everything that is. Pretty intent. Yeah, very. Yeah, so what we see 
outwardly is just a reflection of what's going on inward, right? Mm -hmm. it's, we're viewing the world through our lens of perception. And if your lens of perception is clouded by all those ancestral programs that you inherited, just like you inherited your physical DNA, you're not going to see the beauty. So mm -hmm. won't it be wonderful to experience this? Okay, now we get into the area of the LM categories, which are in the spiritual realm. And they're not a cause, they're not a consequence, but they're impacting, right? Because we're amazing multidimensional beings operating on physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual simultaneously. So this, what's happening in the spiritual field is impacting us. Okay. So I grow into my perfect wholeness by developing and harmonizing my personal quality of perseverance. Is that something that you've been working in? Mm -hmm. I can tell. You know how I can tell? How? Well, it's 93%. You're ready to let it go. It's a number seven. It's like you're, you're on this. You're aware of it. And you're ready to let it go. How about that? Got it. <laughs> and this one in self-acceptance, I accept my resistance to my personal happiness and consciously deal with it. I want you to look in yourself in the mirror every single night and say, I love you, Stephanie. You're amazing. You're incredible. And you deserve to be so happy. So happy. Can you do that for me? I can. I will. I will. And really having you do it for yourself. But sometimes people need to do it for someone else just to get started. All right, in emotional balance and living consciously, I experience myself as part of the whole and at the same time, I am of free will. By combining this, I recognize and balance the polarity between the willingness to learn new things versus closed-mindedness and narrow-mindedness. You know, there's, there's what we want and there's what society tells us we should want. And that is sometimes a fine balance. I have a secret. What? Go for what you want. Because nobody knows better than you what right. your heart's desire is. All right. In finances, I practice personal responsibility. I am responsible for the values and ideals that are important to me in my life. Emotional balance. I recognize the unconscious causes that cause me to insufficiently separate myself from other people's feelings and that cause my own energy balance to become restless. I keep my attention completely on myself and realize that other people's feelings exist independently of my own. Do you try to fix stuff for other people sometimes? Oh, all the time. It's my MO. Okay, so here's the problem with that MO. I'm going to tell you this because... I learned it the hard way because I was just like you. No accidents that we're meeting here today. If you fix it for them and it's something they were here to learn as part of their life journey and their life lesson, guess what's going to happen? They're going to attract more situations just like that so they can learn it. So when you see someone experiencing something that you know you could fix, Honor the fact that you know that and honor their journey because you're really doing both of you a disservice. I wish I had known that when I was your age, but you know it now. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, that's, that's powerful. My shaman told me that. So, and I trust her imminently. I recognize the unconscious causes of ignoring factors for my well-being and optimal lasting energy balance. I can stand to feel good and be happy permanently. I stood the game of ignoring circumstances for my well-being and happiness. Most people are afraid to be permanently happy. Most mm -hmm. people get to a place of happiness and they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yes. Right? It's, yes. <laughs> yes. How's that working for you? It doesn't. 
So next time you catch yourself waiting, say, no, no, I choose this permanently this time. Yeah. Choose. And this is the Healy will help you. All right. Personality aspects and potentials, inner suffering. Oh, it's time to let that go. I am a being worthy of love and I allow my fellow human beings to love me. I transform melancholy and negative feelings into harmonizing unconditional love. How does that feel? Um, it's, it's a tough one. I mean, I, that's, that's the desired state. Um, that's something I really have to work towards. Yeah. And, and you see that number in the, between the two lines, the number two, mm -hmm. it's deep. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're not fully aware, consciously aware. So now we've brought that up to the surface. Now you have an awareness and the Healy is going to help imprint that into more of your conscious mind. Self-worth and self-acceptance. I accept my pain and deal with it in a harmonizing way. You know, there's, we live in a, in a world where there's good, there's bad, there's, there's all kinds of things, but it's really not that we should judge them. It's all there for a reason. Right. Basics of self-esteem. I realize, realize and develop the ability to allow happiness and overcome my fear of feelings of happiness and ease. I'm entitled to happiness without restriction. I take all happiness into myself and radiate it. I would love that. And I'm gonna guess it's not a big part of your current reality. No, it no. hasn't been a big part of most of my reality. Yeah, well. At least, the at least not the restriction part. That's, that part is what's kind of stabbing me, I guess. Yeah, well, it's a number two, so it's deep. It's very deep, but we're just going to shake it loose so that you can feel that and enjoy that in your world. All right, here we have personal responsibility. I am responsible myself for what happens to me. No one but myself is to blame. As far as I myself am the initiator, it is my own responsibility. You know, this is a hard one, right? Law of attraction. We don't like this one, do we? No. None of us like it. No. <laughs> I don't like that at all. <laughs> but you know what? I had something happen to me in the last number of years that was pretty horrific. And I couldn't imagine how I had attracted it. And I had to take a deep dive with my coach. And this was before the coaching module came out. I had self-hatred. But I never knew that. If you had asked me if I hated myself, I would have never thought that I did. But it came out in such a deep and profound way. I went on for a 15 minute rant about how I hated myself and gave all the reasons why. And my coach just looked at me and said, hmm, well, thank God this showed up so we can get that out of you. You don't want to be have not run the show. So when things show up that you think, how in the world did I create that? Ask what the gift and strange wrapping paper is. Where did this come from? Why is it there? What's it showing me? It's there to teach you something. I promise you. All right, finances. I experience the power to understand and implement the following focus for my benefit and the benefit of the whole to receive money. Oh my. Money is like air. It's everywhere. All you have to do is breathe it in. Like I am that. the worst receiver. I'm a great giver and I am the worst receiver. Okay, so Stephanie, here's the thing. You love giving. Mm -hmm. That brings you joy. Mm -hmm. There are so many people in the world who love giving because it brings them joy. What happens when you don't receive that? You're not allowing them to be happy. Be a receiver. It will bring someone else joy. All right, finances again. I experience the power to understand and implement the following focus to comprehend. And last but not least, in self-worth, I accept my blockages and consciously deal with them. 
Good one, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. That one you have to write down, too. All right. So you don't have to write it down now because I'll make sure I will send this PDF. To oh, myself. fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely. And then I'll email it to you later. Oh my God, that picture is killing me. <laughs> so do you I'll see how, do you, do you see how valuable this is? So basically what, what just happened here was it went through a very distinct um, uh, alignment and all these alignment processes. Lori, can I give you my email address in the chat? Yeah, that'd be great. All this alignment now can is is available in a PDF and we can send to our client. We can send to the person to digest, print it out. I was going to say, oh my gosh, this is, I would love to have this. Burns. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. So this is what you're going to get. Absolutely. So Stephanie, now I just want you to sit back and receive these frequencies. Okay. And we're all going to hold space with the knowing that you are more than worthy for all of this. And you will note as this is going on, it's another opportunity to see those affirmations. And we'll just do it for a couple of minutes. Okay. And everybody else can just breathe into this and hold up Stephanie's heart. And just like with all the other Healy programs, it's sending and receiving and adjusting. Because as soon as you change one thing, it changes everything else. As we're running through this, everyone, this is sent directly to Stephanie. So it's okay to feel into yourselves. Remember, there are things that go on in our lives in this consciousness that is, we're, we're pulling it forward for Stephanie, but it's probably within many of us, right? Similar content. So allow, you may be feeling something right now. There's quantum entanglement within all of us right here because we're all in the same space. We're all aware of each other. Um, we're all holding space for Stephanie. This opens us up to be entangled on a quantum level. And so these frequencies are not just going into Stephanie. That's the main focus, right? She's the client. She's the intention, the direction, the GPS signal for this content. But believe me, it's going out into an entire universe. And if you need some healing from this as well, just open yourself up to receive. The whole point here, people, is receiving. Go ahead, receive this. Feel your body. Okay, Stephanie, could you feel that? Oh, yeah. So what I'm going to do when we're done here today for you is I'll run this program for about 26 minutes. Okay, great. And send it to you through the information field. Um, how often, that's about how often I would recommend running it in the beginning. Don't go crazy like me and run it for eight hours. Um, but 
Definitely. You know, I, I suggest people run it 26 minutes a day. Now, Steph, do you have the um, protein module? I do. Um, so I will say, so you're saying to run it for how long and at what, and at what percentage? I'm, I'm just curious what you recommend. Well, I'm extremely, extremely, extremely sensitive so far okay. um, to the vibrations. I mean, like I, I'm shocked at how sensitive I am. Then, then go low, go slow, slow and steady wins the race. The company's going to tell you when you go into the academy mm -hmm. and you watch the videos. They're going to tell you to run it like half a dozen times a day at is it a minute thirty nine seconds or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I am grateful, deeply, deeply grateful that they are recommending people go slow because. Right. This is deep, profound healing. And if you're not working with a coach, it can be a lot because stuff is going to bubble up and you are going to process things. Right. So if you're that sensitive, you can try that. I'm not one that can remember to do it half a dozen times a day because I'm off on too many other tangents, but you could perhaps run it for five minutes one day and see how you feel and then amp it up if you feel okay to 12 minutes and then go up to 26 and, and just baby step your way through it. Okay. No matter how you do it, you're going to hit days where emotions are going to bubble up. Yeah. And you need to do whatever it is you do to process your emotions because we have the Healy. I can highly recommend that you run the gem elixirs. The what? The gem Alaskan gem elixirs the Bach flower essences, the bush flower essences, because all of those are gonna help calm down that emotional state. You'll still process it, but you'll be processing it in a more relaxed way, let's just say. Okay. I understand that this particular vibration that she was just doing, everyone, there's no adjustment for intensity, only duration. So it's sent at a very specific intensity, meaning it really doesn't need a high intensity. Um, it is omnipresent. Um, our, our meridians are highly sensitive to energy. And so when this is sent to a very specific client, aka Stephanie, um, or ourselves when we're doing it, there's no adjustments for intensity, just duration. And smaller increments, smaller increments, more often is going to give you um, your body time to absorb and to integrate. There's a self-care protocol that I highly recommend for everyone. Hydration is key. You need to make sure your body stays hydrated every day. And that's hydration, proper hydration for a human body is half your body weight in ounces of water. That's a baseline. Half your body weight in ounces of water per day. Secondly, movement. We need to move the, the body because it's, it's the muscle movements, long movements, yoga, stretching, dance, walking, whatever, that help to move the lymphatic systems through our body, okay? Uh, number three is grounding. Spend some time grounding. Now, you don't have to be out in the dirt necessarily, but there are, there are things you can get. There are sheets and pillows and, and things that plug into the systems of your house to connect to earth ground or go out in nature, sit in the dirt. Um, sit in the grass, go barefoot. You know, that's grounding. You need to down regulate and discharge the body from this emotional charge and what Healy is giving you. So being grounded is important. Um, number, the last one I find is probably my, one of my most favorite and very important is to fall in love with your life. Find a reason to fall in love with your life. Have a love affair with your life. Okay. And that opens the mind and the body connection in a different way. Self-care protocol. Excellent. That's, that's so important, Ken. Thank you for that. Lori, is this something else that you'll be able to send me? Yep. So what Lori just did is she did a scan on one of the other databases within the resonance, right? That's that database she chose, picked up five very specific alignment tools. This is another part of what Healy, uh, what the, the resonance side of Healy can do, the analysis side of Healy.
And I really encourage you guys. You see, she's these are pretty high numbers, 76. She's resonating with, with needing to be balanced in these areas pretty specifically. So it's a great idea to use these in conjunction with the coaching module because that's going to give you the balancing of the emotional field while you're processing and growing and you're running this again right now i am okay i am just for a minute this time i i can run it again later so so steph how long would you like me to run this program when, when we're done if you're so sensitive you want me to just do it for five minutes i i would like to do it longer if we're going to work together okay so you got to reach out to me and let me know how you're doing tomorrow then. I will. I promise. Okay. Our connections with, um, if we're doing this on ourselves, uh, I'm going to encourage everyone, as Lori said earlier, find some partnerships, find some people that are willing to support you, hold space for you and explain to them. Not everybody's going to understand what you're doing. They don't have to. All they have to do is be willing to listen when you need to speak and be willing to hold space for you in their heart. When we hold space for someone, in other words, you put your attention on a, another human. You know what they look like. You know what they sound like. You've got a relationship with them and you put your attention on them from your heart. You're quantum entangled and they will feel it. Not, a, not always do they reach back to say, oh my God, I was thinking about you today, but sometimes they do. Have you ever thought of someone and they call you it's because it's a coherent signal and this is what we have the power to do is to is, is to hold space for each other so so find an accountability partner or or two or three and then be sure to um, um, lock arms with them during these processes and be willing to be able to share content information with each other you decide your vulnerability level with the person right? But just allow them to care and love on you and support you. Has this been valuable, you guys? Put some comments in the chat. If you guys thought, found content from this, I want to see your hearts. Give me some hearts out there. <laughs> There's some great stuff going on here, right? So my dear Stephanie, I just ran the mental balance programs and the top one is mental balance acute, but it's only at 50%. That's not that high. I'm not sure what, what that's supposed to mean. And anything at like 60% and up, I really look at and go, oh, wow, that's got to be run. 50% and under, it's not as significant. So this is an area. These are mm -hmm. all the mental balance programs, mental balance acute. You could choose to run that on yourself because it is 50. Okay. Um, but your but numbers these are not as high. They're not as high as I would expect with someone who has is dealing with the issues you're dealing with. So trust me, I might have been way higher than this at times. So. Well, I think it, it depends on the, the day. <laughs> right, right. And right now you're getting that support, right? Yeah, you're I am. Supporting you. It's funny, the last couple of days, um, I was talking to um, some friends of mine. I've been feeling more neutral, which is, a, I mean, a blessing. I don't really know where it's coming from. Um, cause it's an unfamiliar feeling is, you know, if is a if feeling neutral is not something that I typically feel. Um, so it's interesting that that showed up. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so one of the questions that I did see in the chat is, you know, how often do you run this and do you go in tomorrow and, and put the same intention? So let's just chat about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. What I have been doing in my six month group coaching programs where we're incorporating the Healy and people are getting that deep dive into how to utilize it for themselves and, and in their practices with their clients. What we've been doing is we, we create an intention and I run the frequencies 26 minutes a day, every day for two weeks. And then we check in and we create another intention Sometimes it's a deeper dive into that same area. Sometimes it's another topic. So we're actually working on, on an issue, if you will, for about a month. But you don't okay. need to go in and change it every day. Because remember, you guys, 
the way the Healy works, it's sending and receiving, right? So it, it has a ton of data that we just pulled up on stuff and it's, it's there. And now every day it can go and send and receive and see how she's feeling and adjust the program. So say that, I'm sorry, say that one more time. So 26, running it at 26 a day for six weeks. Minutes for, you know, in, at, essentially until things start to shift. Okay. Until you see things shift. But generally to do it consistently for about four to six weeks? About four to six weeks would be good. Um, with my coaching groups, I, we're running about four weeks. Okay. Um, I'll tell you, I had, when I was having those self-worth and self-love issues last year, I ran those programs every day, 26 minutes for four months. Wow. Okay. And I didn't change them. I just let them keep running because it's already found the core stuff. Mm -hmm. right? And you can rerun it after a period of time and see, you know, what else comes up. Yeah. Cause it's okay. like peeling away the layers of the onion. And when you're creating an intention for one area of your life and then creating an intention for another area, you will be amazed at how many similarities there are. Whatever's blocking you in one area is potentially blocking you in the other areas as well. Right. You know, there were some things that were mentioned earlier I wanna circle back to um, about how we feel responsible for things in our lives, right? And um, this is showing how some of that should be relaxed and we should release and then be willing to accept um, uh, some, some assistance. There is going to be, again, as I mentioned before, a shift within your biology. And it's, it's time to find alignment with that. Um, Self-care protocols are really going to be important as we start moving through this. Um, it's often, a, there's often a feeling that we want to solve everything at once. But as Lori said, when you solve one thing, it typically aligns many, right? And especially if we start focusing on, say, self-worth, it will align so many things within you that suddenly you don't need to do another scan. It's all of a sudden, all these alignment things were exactly what was blocking some of the other stuff that uh, wasn't coming to us. So, uh, so, so go back and watch this recording and um, which I'm trying to keep up on the questions in the, in the chat here. Um, but hopefully this is kind of making some alignment sense with you. Um, let's see, I wanted to see, there was another question I wanted to answer. So somebody asked a question of where do you find that list to run it tomorrow? So you go down to the little house on the bottom and you go to lists. And the one that's in green is the coaching module. So we can go in here and rename that. And we'll call it balanced emotions. And save it. And then you can go back to that list and there it is balanced emotions. And all you do is pull it back up and hit vibrate, select the amount of time and it'll scan for your Bluetooth device and run it. So it's really important to name it. And then once it's named, you're good to go. You can just run it and find all it. Of, all of these scans are, are as you saw, are um, labeled by the a time code, date timestamp. That's, that's what that number stuff is. So when you rename it, then you can assign meaning to it. And when we assign meaning to things, it has a different psychological and biological impact. So it's important that you, you, you name it. And let's say that somebody out there, like let's say Stephanie did not have a healing, right? Um, then the coach, AKA Lori, could set this client up, do these scans, do this evaluation, do this session. And then within specific timed intervals, based on the agreement between Stephanie and Lori, send those to her field every day. Uh, multiple times per day. 
So the benefit of this is that you can have clients, everyone. You can have clients out there that you're supporting um, and you're interacting with and that you can benefit. And it doesn't, when I say clients, that's what the name is within when we set someone up. A client can be your family member, could be your friend. You don't have to charge for this, but you can also build an entire business model around this. You see what I'm saying? So it could be for you and for business. So there's ways that you can incorporate this. As you heard Lori say before, she's doing in six minutes what she did in six months, right? With her clients and she's making money doing it. So, so it's not, it's not separate from, um, from a compensation model that you're looking for. It's inclusive. There's nobody you should not be working this system on. If you care about someone, if you want to change or help someone's life along the path, first yourself and then others, right? Give it away or build a model in which um, you're implementing it into your current business model. So um, some of you guys out there are coaches already. Phenomenal at what you do. You have, I say, you have to use this system in there. Not only, not only for um, uh, like, like it's questioning your abilities. That's not it. This is an objective observer. No matter how skilled you are, you still bring you to the table, meaning the output of the, or the result of your assessment is subjective. Subjective. There's still a piece of you in the equation. This is the quantum field where life and death, yes or no, night or day is just information. And now it's taking all that information and bringing alignment just to, to you. You find, you understand how that works? Okay. So somebody asked if you could set this up for a couple. Absolutely, you could set up a group. You didn't set up a family. When my brother committed suicide three years ago, we set up the whole family mm -hmm. because it was just, everybody was processing essentially the same feelings, right? And, and also uh, a business group. If you guys are out there building a team in Healy, Put your team together. What's, what's your team's uh, motto? What's your, what's your logo? Whatever it is, put your team together. Get together. Maybe do a Zoom. Get everybody on there and take a picture, right? Get everybody. We got this beautiful picture of everybody right here, right? Well, not everybody's on camera, but the point is there's everybody's right here. We could take a picture of this and we could have a, build a, a model, a coaching model just for this group. You can do it for your people as well. You can do it for your family. You can do it for your business environment. Some of you guys have a brick and mortar business. Um, some I have a client who has a winery. He does this for his farm. He puts his farm in as a client, does an assessment, and finds out the alignment things necessary in the in essentially, like I said, the nuts and bolts of what to do. There's no limit here. Did you see who could be a client? I mean, some of you guys look at who can be a client. It's a person, an animal, a building. A uh, group, right? Okay. Right, and that shows up when you're creating the client, there's a drop-down menu and you just pick from there. Yes. And you can do this for your business. And what, what Ken just said, I actually did that with my Healy team last fall. And I wrote an intention as soon as the coaching module came out that I was gonna be executive director by the end of the year. And I ran both of those, both the team intention and my intention. Every day, 26, I don't know why I picked 26. It just intuitively was what came to me. And I rank advanced four levels in six weeks. I still didn't hit executive director, but you know, it's coming. <laughs> Stay tuned. Hey, shoot for the stars. And if you land on the moon, <laughs> bonus, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, but that was how I hit senior director was, was running these programs. Because I, I'm like, I know I'm blocking. Why do I want to block this? I don't want to block this. Biohack it. That's my. That's the name of the game these days. Biohack the crap out of everything. Yeah. So, so go ahead. Questions. Who's got questions? I, I have not really been able to look at everything in the chat because I've been focused on, on the program and the process. But is there something that we can answer for you? I put my um, email in there. So if there's something comes up that you have a question, feel free to reach out to me. And Ken, I think we wanted to talk about the men for a minute. <laughs> so my intention, gentlemen, um, what I've been doing for over a decade 
is building a conscious effort around holding safety, security, and protection over the feminine energy. I think that we need to move ourselves out of the um, caveman days and uh, start aligning ourselves with a better version of ourselves. And so, men, I'm offering you the opportunity to open your hearts. It takes a very courageous man to be willing to open his heart because the vulnerability part is probably one of the biggest fears that um, that tends to stop any human being. And I often say, I don't, I place myself in front of the sword, not for harm, but for learning. Because the moment I am willing to face these demons and these foes, I can learn something. All right, so opening your heart, um, gentlemen, it's, uh, it's one of those things that I think that will start to give you permission uh, to share and find somebody you trust. Uh, and just do this experiment today. Find someone you trust and tell someone something that gives you a feeling of vulnerability. Do that today. Okay. And, and don't expect anything. Don't expect solution. Just do the act. It's the act that starts to get the body beyond its, limited, its limitations and its old self. So don't expect anything. And even if the person looks totally shocked at you, the point that you actually stepped in, you leaned in, that's part of the healing. So the first time you do it, it's going to be tough. The second time, a little less. And the fourth time and the hundredth time, it's going to still be a challenge, but not as hard as the first. So let's do that, guys. Let's lean in. Let's open our hearts. Let's start building a model where we can help the feminine energy expand to its fullest. I'll tell you what, when we do that, we start, we start allowing our partnerships to be of proper order. We're not in control of anyone. We're in partnership with them. Find your partners, guys. All right, let's expand this world a little bit bigger today. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Ken. And guys, Ken is a fabulous example of allowing his divine feminine to come through and allowing that vulnerability to come through and yet still be as strong as he is. Look at that. He's an amazing macho man, but he has a heart and he's showing it. So I encourage each and every one of you to have Ken as your shining example of how men can actually be vulnerable emotionally. Because we all should right? Because that's part of the communication process. It's part of raising consciousness. It's a part, it's being real. And the more real we each are with everyone, the better world we're going to have overall. I'm willing to give anybody a hug <laughs> and not just a little one. I'm talking a 17 second hug. Everybody, I want you to time your hug next time. I want you to find somebody today, another challenge and hug them. I want you to count in your mind, 17 seconds. We do a 2.5 second hug. <laughs> 17 seconds is where the heart starts to synchronize with the other human and partnership is built. Coherence is born, right? So let's Absolutely. do that today. I love you guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you both. Thank you. If yes. you <laughs> Craig, let's do it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah big hug brother so just yeah, a, couple, great. a couple of questions that i see here um do you now use healy as the main focus for your coaching practice yes i won't coach anyone if they won't use the healy because i'm doing them a disservice now that this this technology exists that's that's just you know you get to set those rules you're the coach it's your business yeah so and the long distance and the thumbprint, it just hold the intention for the person when you're running it. They don't need to be there. They don't need to touch the screen. That's just activating. It's really not reading your thumbprint. It's just activating the program. 
understand the nuts and bolts of the smart device by putting the, the reason they put that picture there. Is so you'll place your finger there. And when you place your finger there, you actually have to look at it, <laughs> right? So you don't miss the spot that brings our attention to the screen or to the present moment. The whole point of that, ladies and gentlemen, is just to bring your attention to the present moment. It's not taking your fingerprint. So what, what we do as a coach remotely is we put our attention on the client and we place our finger there as a surrogate, right? That's it. Quantum entanglement just means where our attention goes is where our energy flows. So this is the beauty of what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is we've got a tool that is not bound by space or time. Understand it's not bound by time either. What Lori, what, what Lori did with Stephanie, what Stephanie is going to experience over the next day, days or weeks will be from this present moment. It doesn't end here. So Stephanie, she's going to pay attention to herself. She's going to write things down. She's going to give herself grace, love, and time mm -hmm. and nourish her body, self-care, right? She, you guys all heard her say she's sensitive. And that's okay because growth sometimes feels, uh, I don't want to put words on it, but it feels like <laughs> a dark night of the soul. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It's a, it's a challenge. And you're going to, you've got to surrender the old self. And there is a process of grief. Folks, there is a process of grief. So when grief comes up, when sadness comes up, it doesn't have to steer your ship, but it does need to be catch your attention. Just let it be. Stay in the moment of grief, but don't let it make decisions for you. That's your awareness that can choose and differentiate. Don't let it make decisions for you and guide your ship, right? Just release it. Be aware of it. This is our power. Absolutely. Looks like Craig has a question. Okay. I know that, um, so by the way, folks, if you want to save the chat at the bottom of the chat there and where you would type a message, there's three little dots on the far right. You can click on that and you, would let, you can save the chat. The content in there is, is valuable. Craig, what do you got? Yeah, hey, I, I know that somewhere in the Healy universe, there's a whole video series about how to use this coaching module. So could you remind us or put a put something in the chat that tells us kind of where the where we can find those? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in um, for those of you that are members uh, in your back office, there is a tool section. And in the tool section, there is a my download section, which has a flyer for this module. But also in that back office is an academy, right? The academy is where videos and training content is available for you. Um, so that's a great component. Uh, Lori just put uh, a couple of links in there around some of the stuff that Michael Dans has done in the past. Fabulous stuff. Um, so anyway, this is, this is, there's great content out there. And I also encourage each one of you to, to reach up to your upline, reach up to your upline, if, whether you're a customer or you're just here visiting to maybe think about starting with Healy, reach up to the person that invited you here, reach back to them, and then um, get more clarity. I'm, I'm probably in some way, but I'm probably available through somebody here um, in terms of getting more clarity, right? Um, but you can ask your upline, ask your whoever invited you here, and, and there may be a way that um, it can get up into me and we can make sure your questions are answered. Lori is amazing, folks. Um, you know, you put your, your emails in there. She's going to send you that chart. Um, she's going to put you in her heart. And, and this is just the expansion that we can have here. So, so let's just... Um, Keep the intention of growth and um, take this content and review the recording. Okay. Absolutely. And share it. Yeah. That's why we're recording it so that the world can learn and fall in love with the Healy coaching module, just like Ken and I have. And for those of you who want to take a deeper dive, I do a six month group coaching program where we literally incorporate 
the Healy Coaching Module step-by-step step, and you get to see the growth. We start with self-worth. We then move into ancestral clearings and then we move into whatever the group's topics are that they want to improve in their lives, whether it's finances, relationships, et cetera. And I'm gonna start another program again in the fall. So if you're interested, let me know. I'm happy to send you info on that. It really is a way to learn how to utilize this because the, the strategic steps of how to do it, we showed you today. But what you saw me do with Stephanie is really the key piece is, is in that interpretation and letting people know, you know how to integrate all this newness into their life and being there to hold their hand. And that program also incorporates a lot of my um, coaching tools that I use with my private clients as well, so. So she will reach back to the emails that were put in the chat. And so you guys will be able to interact with her um, in ways that you would like, right? Absolutely. Send her a bunch of kudos, everybody. Woohoo! And Stephanie, sweetheart. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you, thank you for being so open-hearted and willing to bring uh, 95 people into your life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not just this in this in this moment, this tool is going to serve the world. I promise you, it will get around the globe in a, in, by tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm just saying. Well, thank, thank, you so thank you both. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes. Okay. Thank you, all. you guys are amazing. You're awesome. Stay in a space of love, run coherence this afternoon and know that we love you. And we are so, so, so grateful to have been able to spend this time with you and to mm -hmm. show you a way to improve your lives in no other way that I've ever seen. It's incredible. We are blessed. It, it brings tears to our eyes. Thank you so much. We, we love you both for helping us all like you do. <laughs> Thanks. 17 second hugs everybody come on let's get out there <laughs> let's get out there and let's build it let's keep this coherent energy going so that the, that that the world remember when we're in coherence we are in coherence with everyone that's on the same signal so we keep that intention we keep that love we keep that open-heartedness and give permission to everyone around you to do the exact same thing jeff Craig, all you other men that are out there, brothers, let's start sharing the love in a new way, right? From a vulnerable way. And let's bring down those shields and open up our hearts, right? You feel that? 17 seconds, everybody. Thank you very much. I love you. We'll see you again. And we'll review this, this recording, share it with all the people that you love out there. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Love you guys. Yeah.